gonna happen till you start believing like that. You can't heal nobody. And if you keep thinking it's just you, ain't nothing gonna happen. But it's not just you. You and Jesus Christ are one. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to The Overflowing Life. Listen, we're so excited because we are experiencing the days of heaven on earth. God told the children of Israel that if you do what I tell you to do, and if you fulfill my obedience, whatever I tell you to do, it's going to be like the days of heaven on earth. That's what we're experiencing in our church, and it's spreading all through the city, and it's spreading all around the world. God wants his people to live under the open windows of heaven. Today we're going to continue this powerful message because you got to understand, Jesus said this, that greater works than these you're going to do. The Lord told me that we're getting ready to enter into a time of even greater things, even greater things. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I know it's going to bless your life. So get your Bible, pen, and paper. Go along with us. And in a few moments, we're going to come back and tell you how you can get your copy of today's message. But right now, let's go to the Metro Church. Let's continue to learn how to live under the open heaven. Under an open heaven, we talked about this before, we have three things. Amen. Number one, we have unlimited authority. We have unlimited authority. We have unfettered access. And we have unmeasured anointing. We have those three things. Everybody say unlimited authority unfettered excess, and unmeasured anointing. See, we're living under the open heaven. I know that's hard for the human mind to grasp, but see, you got to see yourself the way Jesus saw himself. You got to see yourself. The world will never know what God really has for them unless we start to grab hold of this. We have to know that we are the people that God has turned this over to so that we can operate under the open heaven. Now, in Matthew chapter 3, let's see if we can see where that came from. Matthew chapter 3, this is kind of reviewing, but in verses 13 through 17 and Amplified, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. But John protested strenuously, having in mind to prevent him, saying, It is I who have need to be baptized by you. And you come to me, but Jesus replied to him, Permit it just now, for this is the fitting way. This is God's method. This is, this is God's way for both of us to fulfill all righteousness. That is to perform completely whatever is right. In other words, to get us to a place before God where it's as though we never disobeyed. Now, we know Jesus never disobeyed, but he came to do that for us. He didn't come to do it for him. He came to do it for us. Now, look what happened as a result of being in that state. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up one, at once out of the water. And behold, amen, watch this, the heavens were open. Everybody say, the heavens were open. The heavens were open. Amen, the heavens were open. And he saw, John saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and lighting on him. That means it wasn't just with a measure. Lighting on him. And behold, a voice from heaven saying, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I delight. And then in John chapter 3 and verse 34 and 35, you got to get a hold of this. He says, for whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. Everybody said, we got to speak with authority. He said, he speaks the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The father loveth the son and has given all things into his hand. And has given how many things? all things into his hand. Now, see, you got to start seeing yourself operating with unlimited authority. Somebody shout unlimited authority. How do we have that unlimited authority? Through the name of Jesus. The Bible said the name of Jesus, amen, is above every name. The Bible said at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The way we operate in that unlimited authority is through the unlimited authority of the name of Jesus. Now, y'all know out in, the, out in the world, they got something called a black card. Amen, amen. And uh, the black card, you know, especially the one from American Express, you got that black card. 
That means there's no limit on your credit. Amen, amen. You walk in there and put that down, they, <laughs> all them folks start coming over by you. All them salespeople start coming. Come on, somebody. They see you dropping and drop that black card down there. <laughs> that means there's no limit. Amen. That, that black card, I mean, there's no limit. Now, here's what God is wanting us to see as believers. He wants us to see ourselves with a spiritual black card. That means there's no limit in what I can ask for. The Bible says he wants us to begin to operate in unlimited authority. Somebody shout, unlimited authority. Now, it's not in your power, but it's in the name of Jesus. Didn't Jesus say, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me? But he didn't. He said, what? Go ye therefore. What? Go ye therefore. He didn't say, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. I better not catch y'all trying to use it. He said, no, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore and do what? And use it. God doesn't want you to take his name, amen, and put it in the back of your billfold. He wants you to take that name and use it. He wants you to take the authority of his name and make things happen in the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, but you have unfettered access. You see, Jesus talked about, I do the things that I see my father do. What you got to understand, he says, I'm giving you access to come behind the scenes to see how I do what I do. You see, God is giving us access. He, he, he's giving us, how's he doing it? Through his prophetic ministry. When you hear these different prophets coming up before you, the Bible said, God said, I'll do nothing in the earth until I what? Show it unto my servants, the prophets. Amen. And when God starts talking through prophets and God, the Bible, a prophet is called a seer. Amen. That, that prophet sees what God is doing. That prophet sees and then they say what God is doing. And then if you will grab hold of that, then you can begin to do the works that God has called you to do. I mean, God says, I'm giving us access. I'm giving you access. I'm letting you come behind the scenes and see what I'm doing. Now listen, I learned a long time ago, if you be quiet around old folks, you can hear what they're saying. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. I learned that a long time ago, see? And I learned that I, I always like to, to hang around older folk. But if you're going to hang around older folk, you got to be quiet. They don't want to hear what you got to say. I'm getting quiet in Zion now. I heard Happy, Happy Caldwell was talking about, he was sitting with Oral Roberts one day. They were just in place, you know, and he was sitting there gleaning from Brother Oral Roberts. And, they, you know, he's sitting there, you know, he quiet, he listened to everything Brother Robert say. Now, you know, them old preachers might say the same thing 50 times, but you listen to it. You understand? You just listen. I, I just go up and see Mama. Mama might say the same. Mama going to say the same thing every time I come. I know what my Mama, I know what Mama going to say, but I listen every time. Amen. I just listen to Mama. I know what she going to say. She going to talk about them chilling. Y'all got to take care of them chilling. I'm going to I'm going to get y'all. Y'all just, just ma'am, Mama. We're going to take care of them chilling. I mean, she going to say the same thing every time. But Brother Robert said he was, he, you know, happened to say he was talking to Brother Robert. Then this young preacher walked in, interrupted them, and said, Brother Roberts, I want to introduce myself. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. And, you know, Brother Roberts was nice. He's always very gracious. And he shook the young man. And then the young man started telling him all about his ministry. How many people he running and this, that, and the other. And, then, and Brother Roberts just kind of sat there. And, but when he left, Brother Roberts said, uh, you know, he's not very smart, is he? <laughs> Amen. He came into the presence of somebody who knows 50 times more than he knows. And he sat there trying to tell me what he's doing. I hope some of y'all got something out of that. See, if you'll get quiet around the Lord, he'll tell you what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like to hang around with the Lord, and, and, and the Lord will tell you, see. He'll let you see behind the scene if you don't just bust up on, the, on him trying to tell him what all you want to do. See, you got, you got to let the Lord show you. Everybody say, the Lord will show you. So you get, out, you get unfettered access if you know how to act when you get there. Woo, somebody shout Hallelujah. And then he says he gave him the spirit without measure. Amen. An unmeasured anointing. How many of y'all want God to give you the spirit without measure? See, God want to be able to trust you. I, I, can, I can turn my anointing up, loose up on you. Amen. I can release my prosperity anointing on you. I know I can trust you with the money. I know I can trust you with my gifts. I know I can trust you. Amen. With my revelation. I know I can trust. How many of y'all are ready for God to give us the anointing without measure? 
Everybody say, God has given us the anointing without measure. Now, that's not for one person. Please understand, he's not given, Jesus is the only person that he gave the anointing without measure, but we are the body of Christ, and he wants to give us as the body, amen, everybody doing what they're supposed to do. Look at, look at this, uh, you know, Friday night, I, I wasn't able to be here, you know, I had a little challenge there, but it was just beautiful. Pastor Jay would tell me about it, all the different people working together. Amen. Uh, to make that, that go with righteous rhythm and rhyme. Everybody just doing their gift. Everybody doing what God has called them to do. You know what? And I, I believe that prophecy that Shantae gave this morning, God said, I'm getting ready to restore. I'm getting ready to restore my church. We're getting ready to see the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. We're getting ready to see all the ministry of help. My God, we're going to see people that's supposed to be ushering, they ushering. People that's greeting, greeting. People that's singing, singing. People that's anointed to be minstrels, they on the instrument. I mean, we're getting ready to see the body of Christ be everything that God has called us to be. And when everybody gets in that place, he's going to give us the anointing without measure. Are y'all ready for the anointing without measure? Amen. Say aloud, when we give God pleasure, he gives us the anointing without measure. Now watch this, because we have greater authority and because we have greater access and we have greater anointing, then we're going to see even greater things, even greater things. Now look what he said in John chapter 14, verses 11 through 14. Again, this is in the CEV version. It says, have faith in me, when I say that the Father is one with me and that I'm one with the Father, or else have faith in me simply because of the things I do. I tell you for certain that if you have faith in me, you will do the same things I'm doing. See, now that's, 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 that's where the rubber meets the road. If you have what? Faith in me. He said you can do the same thing that you see me doing. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, have faith in him. He said, look, if you have faith in me, you can do what you see me do. If he laid hands on the sick and they recovered, then if I have faith in him, then I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Amen. If he casts out devils, if I have faith in him, then I cast out devils. If he can take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people, then I can do the same thing that he did. He said, if you have faith in me, whatever I do, you can do too. Somebody shout hallelujah. Get your copy of today's life-changing message. Men can make you famous, but only God can make you great. God is saying, I'm not interested in making anybody famous. I'm interested in making you great. Learn to live the life God designed for you when you order today's message by writing to us. Visit our website or call 1-800-465-6830. He said, you will even, watch this, you will do even greater things. Now that I'm going back to the Father, ask me and I will do whatever you ask. This way the Son will bring honor to the Father. I will do whatever you ask me to do. Boy, that almost knock you over on it. He said, I will do most of the stuff you ask me to do. Huh? He said, I'll do what? Whatever. I'll do what? Whatever. I'll do what? Whatever. I'll do what? Whatever. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Now, you know what he's saying, whatever. That don't mean, you know, give me somebody else's wife. You know he ain't going to do it. I'm not talking about stuff that's against the scripture, but I'm talking about in line with his will. He said, whatever you ask me to do, I will do it. Lift both hands to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Whatever, whatever I ask you to do, you, you will do it. So that's the kind of confidence we got to have when we pray. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him. Huh? This is the confidence that we have in him. 
that when, whenever we, whatever we ask in prayer, we believe that we receive it. We can have that kind of confidence. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now look at the prerequisite. He said, because you and I are one. You and I are one. When they see me, they've seen my father. And when they see you, they've seen me. Oh, y'all got to grab hold of this. T.L. Osborne shook the missionary world. Amen. And when T.L. Osborne went, he told those people wherever he went, he said, I am Jesus, come to you. Well, now, brother, that ain't nothing but blasphemy. No, what he's saying, <laughs> I'm as close as what you're going to get. You got to believe when I come that I am come in the name of Jesus. And he told those people that I am Jesus. He went into the dark recesses uh, of the jungles of Africa. He didn't go over there as a Baptist. He didn't go over there as a Methodist. He didn't go over there as Assemblies of God. He said, I come as Jesus to you. And my God, when he began to operate in that, folk got healed. Miracles began to happen. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, this is the thing that you and I are struggling with because we've been taught by religion not, okay, now, you're just getting too high-minded. No, we're too low-minded. And we wonder why we're not seeing any miracles. We wonder why we're not seeing the dead raised. We wonder why we're not seeing people healed because you got to be just as bold as Jesus. Jesus said, when you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And what you and I got to do, hey, when you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. Jesus just walked in the door when I walked in the door. Amen. You got to understand that he and you are one. Say out loud, Jesus and I, Jesus and I are, one. are one. Isn't that what he prayed in, 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 in John chapter 17? He said, Father, let them be one even as you and I are one. That's not something you and I dreamed up. That's something that he prayed to happen. Amen. He wasn't just talking about unity between denominations. He was saying, Father, let them be one, even as you and I are one. When they see, when they see you, when they see me, they've seen you. When they see my disciples, they've seen me. I wanted to be the same way. Jesus prayed, amen, that when you and I walk into a hospital, Jesus just walked in that hospital. Quit trying to call for Jesus to come down. He already there. Oh, Lord, won't you come down and put your hand on their fevered brow? No, you put your hand on their fevered brow. And when you put your hand on a fevered brow, Jesus put his hand on a fevered brow. You got to have that kind of anointing. You got to have that kind of authority. You got to have that kind of faith. You got, ain't nothing going to happen till you start believing like that. You can't heal nobody. And if you keep thinking it's just you, ain't nothing going to happen. But it's not just you. You and Jesus Christ are one. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Oh, let me finish this up. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout even greater thing. Somebody shout even, even greater thing. Now watch this. Let's do a little word study. Now, the word August, it means these things. Now, y'all know August was added by Augustus Caesar. I mean, season them cold-blooded, got their own month. <laughs> now, you know you bad now. When you say, I need me another month, we're going to call it August. After the, see, uh, amen. What about the month of Silesius? Okay, I'm going to let that alone. I'm going to let that alone. I don't really believe the Lord appreciated that. But anyway, but y'all know where it came from. You got what July and August were added. There used to only be 10 months according to the Jewish calendar, but Caesar was so big time, Julius added July and Augustus added August because they thought they were gods. Now you gotta grow up, grab hold of this, now you're gonna miss it. If you, if you miss this, you're gonna miss something big. They thought they were gods. Jesus talked about that in the Thessalonians. Paul said it, a time would come when they would think to change times and seasons. See, only a god can change times and seasons. But you got to understand what this word august, or the word august, uh, august, it means grand, it means splendid, it means awe-inspiring, magnificent, to be revered, venerable, majestic, or supreme. Now watch this, here's what I want you to grab hold of. It also means to exalt or elevate. Everybody say exalt, exalt. or elevate. elevate. 
Amen. It means to be exalted or to be elevated. Now, the Lord has spoken to us that the month of August would be the month amen, which we will begin to see even greater things. Now, a part of that even greater thing, hear me very carefully, that word August, it means to be seen with reverence, to be seen as an, with, with an, in an august way, to be seen, now please don't let this thing, you know, hit you the wrong way, to be seen as godlike. Now, I did not say we're gods. But you got to understand, we must see, be seen as God's representative. Now, these guys got in trouble with God because they tried to be God's. And you see, they ain't around no more. But what we got to understand, watch this. God says, I'm getting ready to elevate my people in the eyes of mankind. Say out loud, we about to be elevated. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 5 said, Behold, ye among the heathen. That means the heathen going to see this. God wants the heathen to see God in us. Did you hear what I just said? You see what they're doing now? They, they want to see God in somebody so bad. I was listening to a man the other day. I, I mean, I, Pastor Jennifer showed it to him. I, I, let, me, let me read the rest of this. He said, Behold you among the heathen regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your day which you would not believe, though it be told you. God said, I'm getting ready to do some great things. Somebody shout, even greater things. Amen. See, people are wanting to see God in somebody. Don't you ever think that they don't want to. That's where the Antichrist is going to come from. And you got to understand, this has always been in man. Man is wanting to see God in human form. That's why Jesus Christ came to this planet. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, I heard a man, uh, Pastor Jennifer showed, uh, uh, it was like, a, I would not have believed it if she hadn't shown it to me. There was a man, they were at some kind of interview or something and on one of the uh, cable networks, and they had these, I guess, uh, supporters there. And uh, this man said, and I, I tell you, I wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it in my own eye. This man said, if Jesus Christ were to come down from the cross and tell me, something about this certain politician. He said, I would not believe him unless I checked with Trump. No, I didn't tell you the politician either now. I was trying to be nice. Did you hear what I just, I didn't believe, I, I, I know that man didn't just say that. He said, if Jesus Christ were to come down off the cross and tell me, I might as well say it and I didn't let it out, that Donald Trump is in collusion with the Russians I would not believe Jesus until I checked with Trump first. That's how bad people want to see God in the flesh. See, y'all ain't getting this. Y'all about to let that pass by. We're living in a time right now, if the righteous people don't do it, if we don't get out here and demonstrate God's love, God's grace, God's power in us, the people will look for it somewhere else. And it's time for us to quit trying to act so humble and trying to be so sweet and all like this and recognize that Jesus Christ did not come down in his human flesh and walk in human flesh unless he knew there was a necessity for God to manifest himself in human form and you and I are going to have to be about the Father's business. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. And God is wanting to elevate us in the sight of the heathen. Look what it said about Joshua in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. You hear what God said? This day I'm getting ready to elevate you. This day I'm getting ready to magnify you in the sight of the people so that people will know just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Let's bring that up and update it. This day I'm getting ready to elevate you in the sight of all the people so they will know just as I was with Jesus, I'll be with you. Are y'all ready for that to happen? 
He said, I'm in this month of August. I'm getting ready to elevate you in the sight of mankind that they may know just as I was with Jesus, so will I be with you. God is looking for a people in this hour that he can elevate, a people that he can lift up. This is a month of August when God wants to do august things in us where people will fear God, where they will reverence God, when they'll know that there's a God in heaven and his name is it's Jesus Christ. Somebody give God a shout of praise in the house. Woo, glory to God. I know you were blessed by today's message. Now listen, Jesus said, I can only do what I see my father do. But when he saw his father do something, he had bold, he was bold enough to step out to do it. That's what we're doing. And he said, when you do that, you're going to see even greater things. We are in this mode of even greater things, greater healing, greater miracles, greater financial prosperity, greater outreach, greater salvations. Everything is going to be greater than what we've ever seen it before. I want you to find out how to do that. So I want you to get a hold of today's message. Just simply call us right now. Operators are standing by, or you can go to our website, fullcouncil.org, or, of course, uh, you could write to us at our post office box. That's 2160 North Little Rock, Arkansas. The zip code is 72115. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, listen, everybody's excited about the upcoming Fall Holy Ghost Revival with Dr. Jennifer Johnson and her special guest, Apostle Travis Jennings, along with uh, other psalmists who are going to be in the house. They're going to tell you all about it here in just a moment as soon as we leave the air. Listen, it's so great having you join us here on the broadcast, but it's even greater in person. We want to invite you to be a part of one of our services at uh, one of our full council locations wherever you are. Now, I believe there's a full council near you no matter where you are. There are. There's a graphic there that shows the locations of our church, the times of our services, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there very, very soon. Hey, listen, our time's up for today. Remember next time, keep living life to the full until it overflows. These are no ordinary times. These are no ordinary events. These are no ordinary challenges. In these extraordinary times, you need to experience the power of an extraordinary God. You cannot afford to continue with things as usual, life as usual, church as usual. That's why you cannot afford to miss the 2018 A Call to Excellence Holy Ghost Revival with this year's theme, No Ordinary Word, No Ordinary Works, no Ordinary Worship. Join host and speaker Dr. Jennifer Johnson along with guest speaker Apostle Travis Jennings and guest psalmist Kilante Gavin for two powerful nights that are certain to impact your life in an extraordinary way. That's the 2018 A Call to Excellence Holy Ghost Revival, September 19th and 20th, 7 p.m. nightly at the Metro Church. For more information, visit acalltoexcellence.org.